So first, we're going to talk about how everything is organized inside of Unity in regards to scenes, objects, scripts, and all of that stuff. Because once you understand how everything is organized, you're gonna get a better sense for how to connect one thing to another or where to look to find something. So this is kind of a complex graph that honestly hurts my eyes a little bit, but I thought it would be useful to show you a macro level view of everything. If we have our game, then our game can have several scenes and our scenes can hold several game objects, like anything in our world that we're playing, like enemies, environment, lights, cameras, and all that other stuff. And each of those objects will have components that give it behavior. Now, the way that all of that looks inside of Unity, we have our build settings, and we'll look at this in a second, but our build settings is where we have all of our levels. And in this case, we're gonna highlight level one and just zoom into that. So inside of level one, we have a list of game objects. You're gonna find a list of game objects in something called the hierarchy view. And um, you know we have our scene view that visualizes all of our game objects inside of level one. And if we zoom in to each game object right here, we'll see that each one has some data at the top, which is related to that particular game object, like its name and a few other things. Every game object will have this at the top and a transform component. And then underneath that, we're gonna have a list of other components. So our main camera may have a camera component, an audio listener so that it can hear sounds. Our enemy shooter may have a collider, a health component, and this means that it's a script that we have created. It's maybe some other behavior like firing bullets. Our player would have player movement, some kind of collider. It would also have health and some visualization with some um, mesh renders and whatnot. This is how everything is organized inside of Unity. Again, that's our scenes inside of our build. Each scene will have game objects and each game object will have components, which give this object specific behavior. Inside of Unity, if you create a new empty project, the only thing I've done here is I've renamed my starting scene. And if you go to File and Build Settings, inside of here, you can see that this is a previous scene that we connected but then deleted. So I'm just gonna press delete to clear that out. If we want to add a scene to our game build, we just drag and drop and we could add multiple different scenes if we had them. So we'd build out all those scene files into our final build. And each of those scene files would have game objects and data and whatnot inside of them. So we have our tutorial scene. This is our game, game wide view of everything. So I'm gonna close that. And inside of our tutorial, if you double click a scene file, it will open up. This is pretty empty. Inside of our tutorial scene, we have two game objects. We have a main camera and we have a directional light. Now, the reason these are named that way is just because of the defaults. I could make another game object by right clicking, create empty, and it'll give it a name. Game object is fine for now. I'm gonna press Control S to save. That little asterisk just means that we haven't saved it yet. Now you can see our game object is empty other than a transform component. But these other default objects, like our main camera and our directional light, you can see that on these game objects, we have components that give it behavior. In the case of our light, we can choose a different kind of light and that's all defined inside of this component. Expand that, you can see more down here. And we can add other things here. We can also look at our camera. You can see, again, it is a game object, but in addition, it has a, another component called camera. And camera, we could mess with the settings here. We could also create our own custom script and we could call that script whatever we want. And then we could define all of these variables and we could define behavior inside of that and then attach that script as a component. Well, we will look at that a little bit later. So for now, the important part is just to understand how everything is organized. We have a list of scene files in our build. Inside of this particular scene, we have game objects, and these all get created whenever we press the play button. It will instantiate all of these game objects, and then things will happen in the scene. And finally, each of these game objects have components that define the behavior that this particular game object can do. Now let's look at the game objects and components in a little bit more detail. 
So like I said before, a game object is just a container that has some basic level information. So a name and some other things like layers and tags, and then also a transform component. Every game object inside of our scene needs a transform component because it needs a position in the world. So a position, a rotation, and a scale. And the important thing to realize is that with our empty container and our base level information, we can define this game object to do whatever we want by adding more components. Now, to look at another example, maybe we have an enemy shooter game object like we saw inside of the scene. And our enemy shooter can have a transform, maybe a collider because we need to detect if it collided with the player bullets. It also needs a health because we want it to track its remaining health and maybe take damage or things like that. And then finally, we want it to fire bullets and we would handle each of these behaviors inside of these scripts. So anything related to the health like and tracking health would be here. This is what it would look like inside of the inspector. Anything about firing bullets or maybe it's combat behavior could be handled in here. And then we could handle all of that inside of a script. And just making this broad connection between the behavior that we want and then creating a script or component for that and then defining the details inside of that script. So if we were to zoom in to one of our custom scripts, we might see something like this. And we will look at the scripting side a little bit later. But as a preemptive view, we would have our fire bullets script, and this would also be the class name inside of a Unity Mono behavior. And so we'd have our class name. This will define everything related to the fire bullets once we have it attached. And inside of here, we define a damage amount, for example, and then we'd see it pop up inside of the inspector view right here inside of Unity. We could have any number of things that are related to fire bullets. We could add more if we want. And we're isolating that all inside of this component. And then inside of here, we could also have some functions or methods that we could run whenever we need. So we could have a fire for the fire bullets. So we could say fire bullets.fire. And we could also detect the player. And then I'm just leaving some comment blocks here to give you examples and pseudocode of what you might add there later on. Not really important about the syntax for now, just important to think about how the concepts are organized and how we can start thinking about this stuff and understanding how it's all connected. So now just to make the example really clear in regards to what a game object is and what a component is, we're gonna take a look at our empty game object that we made before. Again, that was just right clicking and saying create empty. We made another one. We would have another empty game object. I'm going to select that and delete. Okay, so we have our game object. Let's look at some of the pre-made game objects that Unity gives to us. If we were to right click up here in the hierarchy and select light and then point light, you'll see it will create a new game object. It will name it. It will give it a transform position and then it will get automatically attach this component called light. Now here's the interesting thing. The only thing that makes a point light, a point light is this light component and then a few configured settings like type point and whatever. It's really not that different from our game object. See if we click between the two, it's a different name and it's a new component. What we could do, for example, I'm gonna select that and hit delete. If we were to click our game object that we made, I'm gonna rename this point light it's still an empty game object. It just has a new name. We can also say add component and then you can either search around here or I'm gonna type in light and we'll see our light component pop up and we select it. You see, we've now converted our empty game object into a point light just by attaching a new component and then a name just so that it makes sense. But we could really call this whatever we want. We could call it example light. And we could configure this more if I want I just want to really make the point clear that anytime you make a new sample object inside of Unity, it's really just a different assembly of components. So if we were to make a cube, see how we have our transform, we have our name, but we have all of these components down here. We could make our cube from scratch if we wanted. It's all built from a game object and we could build it from an empty game object. So let's actually do that real quick, just, just to show you one more example of this. 
we have our cube and we're gonna make a new empty game object. We're, we'll call this sample cube. And on our sample cube, we're going to pull that out a little bit. We can see this in the space. Um, if you see me using hotkeys over here, I, I'm mainly just using Q, W, E, R to move between the manipulators and you can move your scene objects around. So our sample cube, use this as a reference. Our cube has a cube mesh filter. Let's try to add that. Component, cube mesh, let's try mesh filter. Okay, let's compare cube. Now we see that we're missing a mesh here. One cool thing about Unity is if you click this little bullseye thing right here, it will bring up a pull down window that has any assets related to this empty variable that will pop up and show you inside of your list of assets. We're gonna click on cube. Okay, so it's gonna give us a cube mesh, just like we have up here. We also need a mesh renderer. So I'm going to click on my sample cube and type in mesh renderer. Okay, so we have a kind of neon pink cube here and that doesn't look exactly the same. So let's click back. It looks like they're giving it a default material. So our mesh renderer is actually used to visualize the cube inside of our scene. So under materials right here, we can either create a new material and put it in or we can click this and look for default material. Just to show you that we can, I'm going to click down to my project panel down here, and your project panel is gonna be everything on your system. So if I were to right click and click on show and explore on our scene, it's gonna bring up a window, and this is just showing you your asset files inside of assets inside of your Unity project. So whenever you made your Unity project, mine was called Tutorial Sandbox, and click down here, and you can go to assets and this is our scene file. You can also see that if we were to right click inside of assets and click on create, click on material, we can give this a name. I like the convention M underscore M for material and we'll just call this um, sample cube. If I were to do this again, right click and show and explore, you can see our project view is containing all of our files related to our project. And again, inside of your Unity project, that's this is your Unity project. Inside of assets, this is gonna be where all of your scripts are located, all of your materials, animation clips, and things like that. Just make sure you understand the difference between your files on your system and your project view, your assets, and your objects inside of your scene, inside of your hierarchy view. So just to show you, back in our sample cube, we are going to assign a different material, but this material that we just made is default. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to explain the difference between an asset and a game object in the scene. And finally, on our cube, we have a box collider. So we're gonna add a box collider. And then we could configure some things down there. But you can see how all of these things are just a game object that we just defined using components to give it the behavior that we want. And once you understand that, that is the majority of understanding Unity, because if you know that all of these are game objects, then you can do something with that. If you know that a cube has a box collider component, then you may know that this cube can look for this cube's box collider component inside of a script and then do things with it. So we need to understand how all of this stuff is organized before we can start to manipulate it and do some interesting things inside of our scripts.